Jeremy Lou, Jeremy Lou, Jeremy Lou, Jeremy Lou, Jeremy and all of those things that you guys spent a loads of time talking about in your advisory as far as respecting the speaker, participating. Okay, it's way more fun if you guys are engaging in this. Okay? Not talking to your neighbor. Sound good? I will call you out. Um, my name is Jeremy. I am a wedding portrait and commercial photographer. All that means is I take pictures of people. I shoot people. Professional. So um, today's talk, y'all, today's talk is going to be about more entrepreneurship rather than photography. Um, I think you guys all know what photography is, right? Cool. Um, so what I want to talk about today is more of how I became a photographer that people wanted to pay me for, um, rather than just me take pictures at the beach or something and nobody knows who I am. Um, but before we do that, let me tell you a little bit about me. I am born and raised in Reno, Sparks, Nevada. I keep saying Reno and Sparks. I went to Mendai when I was your guys' age, and I went to Reed High School. Um, when I was your age, I was a nerd. Uh, I still am, but I got facial hair now. So, who else has facial hair? Oh. Mine didn't start until like after high school, so yeah, this is all I grow. You have eyebrows? Bro, keep them. Um, so, I was in choir, but that's all I did. I actually started working when I was in eighth grade at McDonald's. Um, by the time I was in ninth grade, I was a manager at McDonald's, and which was there bad because all my friends got free food, all of them. Um, and I was there until like I was 16 or so, and then started a few other jobs doing other things. All throughout high school though, I was just in choir. Um, I just focused on school. I am what you call an introvert. You guys know what that is? Yeah. Cool, I'll explain. I was going to explain regardless. An introvert is, um, let's call them the antisocial of the group. The people that would more like uh, to be by themselves rather than hang out with other people. Um, I kind of grew up this way, and, and for some reason, when I was in school, it was considered a bad thing. Because I never wanted to go to parties. I never wanted to hang out with a bunch of people together. I never really wanted to go to concerts because too many people kind of was just weird to me. I wanted my space. Um, so I grew up with this whole thing holding over my head that an introvert was bad. So I forced myself to kind of do certain things and um, to hang out with other people, and I hated it. As I got older to now, I actually kind of like it, um, being an introvert, because I spend most of my time editing, um, hanging out in my house, um, playing with my kids. But the weird thing is, is when I pick up a camera, I'm an extrovert. I'm like the life of the party because I get to hide behind something. So when I'm shooting 200 people um, for a wedding, all of a sudden now everybody's focused on me and I'm okay with it. But as soon as I put that camera down, like I run away from it. We're not friends. Um, so who here is into art in any form of art? Are you in the art? No art at all? I don't know how to draw either. But you don't know how to do it. So, alright. So you guys that are into art, this is for you. The other ones just listen calmly. Um, art is huge. What art is, is creating something creating something that somebody else can't see themselves. If I gave you guys all a camera to take a picture, do you think it would be the exact same picture? Even if I put a guy and a horse and a tree and I had you guys stand in this exact spot, do you think it would be the same picture? No. Uh -huh. Why is it that somebody will pay me thousands of dollars for a picture and not pay you guys thousands of dollars for a picture? No. Nothing to do with age. There's a 17-year-old photographer in New York who makes three times as much as I do. What? Have you heard of a turtle getting paint on their belly and walking on a canvas and selling for $2 million? That happened. No, that turtle's nothing. The guy who bought it is crazy. What's up? I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Okay. Good talk. Um, 
So, like we got curious George in here. <laughs> so what I want you guys to focus on, actually everybody close your eyes. Okay. And or, do we need to split you guys up? I will split you up right now. I will split you up. You like that dad voice? Are you tapping or are you yourself? See, dapping to me, is it dapping or dapping? Dapping! I'm sorry, I heard the same thing twice. It's a B. It's a B? Dapping? Um, okay, everybody close your eyes. Deep breath in. With your eyes closed. I want you guys to picture yourself 10 years from now. I want you guys to think about the car you're driving. I want you guys to think about the house you're living in. And the place you're living in. <laughs> Alright, everyone open your eyes. Oh, she's watching you. I don't know if there's a reason for this, but she will come here and do stuff. I don't know if she's allowed to do these things. Spanks? You like a spank? Yeah. With the roller? She has a really long one. That's nice. Okay, guys. All right, so when you guys closed your eyes, those who took it seriously, I want you guys to think about what you guys thought about, okay? I want you guys, this is important to me because when I was your age, I used to do this all the time. I had very little real friends. I had a good core of friends. But remember, I was an introvert. I hung out by myself a lot. So a lot of stuff that I did was thinking about my future because I was ready to be in the future. I was that kid that was so ready to be an adult. So I would close my eyes, and for some reason, I would always picture myself successful. I never pictured myself in a box. Well, not living in a box, I mean, I've been in a box. I never pictured myself driving a crappy car, not having a car. I never pictured myself living on the streets, which I do have some friends that do. For real. We all have the same education, why are they living in the street? And I've never dreamt, I just hear this noise right here. An evil noise. And so, um, those who have thought it seriously, did anybody think that they, what kind of car were you guys driving in your in your Okay, like a really good golf cart? No, I had a good golf cart. Camaro? Cadillac. Cadillac. What, how, where, where were you living? What part of the world? It's going to be golf cart. Space is not a golf cart. Where? Ireland? Ireland? Oh, I love Ireland. Oh, where? Like a big city? Like New York, San Francisco, or something smaller? Oh, I like that. That's too big for me. Spain. Nice! Spain. Missouri. Missouri? What's in Missouri? My family. Cool. Oh, that's actually amazing, right? And what type of house were you living in? Back of, why, why am I back of the van? Perfect. Small houses, like look at tiny houses. Because they go on the back of a car and you can drive in. The reason I ask you guys this is because for some reason, as I got older, my dreams started to fade away a little bit because things would happen in my life. Um, I would, um, just a few pet bad things, I'm sure you can Google it, would happen, and nothing too crazy. I was never a bad kid, I was never anything, but the people would kind of stop on my dreams a little bit, so my dreams would start to fall. And then I started to take care of myself and, and build up a little bit. So you guys now, the visions that you guys had, whether it's living in a, a dumpster behind McDonald's or living in Spain, those are your goals. It's actually really hard to live in a dumpster behind McDonald's because they will kick you out. They will, yeah. When you will live in jail. Yeah. yeah. And then you're going to be, you know. Okay, great. Ladies and gentlemen, bring it in. I'm with so, no I love it. so I 
had kind of a hard, a hard time doing kind of the next thing I want to talk about. Um, when I talked about, I only talked about the last part of each class last time. Before I do this, actually, you guys have a paper. Can you guys give me the first question of your paper? Okay, what do you guys think, as a photographer, as a business owner, um, do I need? Did I explain what Hatch was? No. Okay. No. We know what Hatch is. Yeah. What is it? It's, I need my notebook. Perfect. Uh, Hatch is a membership-based photography studio for photographers, videographers, and models. We teach and mentor everybody of all ages. What? It's different? Um, you need social skills. Perfect. You need to know how to like deal with crazy people. Right. You need editing skills. What other skills would I need as a photographer? Like business skills. Perfect. What kind of business skills? Like being able to run a business without going into debt. All right. So does that work with art? Do you guys feel like artists are business people? Yep. Yeah. Have you guys heard the term starving artist? Yes. Because it's notorious that artists don't know how to sell their work, to make their money. Not all artists, but there's a few. So my biggest skill that I had, I went to UNR for two years for business. I didn't get my degree. I slept one day and just kept sleeping. I just didn't go to school. Um, that's why I became a massage therapist. Okay. Um, so my biggest skill and what I teach most of the photographers in our area, Reno, Lake Tahoe, SAC, um, is how to run a business. How to let people know that you are doing photography, they are doing photography, how to let people know that they are charging for photography, and how to get them to pay for photography. So business is huge. That's probably the number one. What other skills? What up? You raise your hand. Give it to me. No, it's just you. <laughs> yeah, look. Right, it's you. All right, you think about it. I'm gonna come back to you. And write it down next time. No, I'm a man. <laughs> what? Yes, go. That's why I'm Oh, did you move to the next one? Yeah. All of them. You need all of them. Uh, there's always that joke about math. There's always that joke like, hey, when am I going to need this? And for me, honestly, not photography, but like my girls are learning. My girls are almost your guys' age. Um, and I have to teach them what you guys are learning. So that's what I have to learn. I'm amazing at math. Like crazy. That's the only thing I took in college was math. What? Oh. Four plus nine? <laughs> What's well, nine plus ten? Ooh. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Save that for now. The next thing that I want to talk to you guys about is um. No, give me your last question. We just we'll do them all. Oh, what you? Okay. That's your guys' answer, right? Do you remember? No, I haven't. Oh. Yeah. Uh. No. No. I um. You know what I planned on when I was when I was in high school? I planned on owning a big business, making a lot of money. As broad as that sound, I went I went to college for business, for a business degree. And the thing that scared me the most about that is when I left for I if I were to graduate and get my degree in business, what do I do with a business degree? There's not like a hey, let's go to this office of business and now you make a ton of money. It freaked me out, which is why I dropped out of school. Um, Yes, I had other options. I could have changed my degree. I could have done something else. But in my mind, in my life at the time, it didn't work. I knew that I was going to be successful. I just had no idea what. I became a massage therapist for six years. I ended up teaching massage therapy. Um, I did really well at it. I had a good client base, but I hated it. Massage therapy, small room, clock, and I would watch that clock. An hour over, you're out. And I wouldn't connect with my clients at all. I wouldn't care about anything about them. It was weird how photography came into my life. Um, did I tell you the story of how I became a photographer? No. I'm like running into like different classes now. I'm like, I'm sure I talk about it. I, we adopted our first kid, Jamie Lou, from my sister, who was a drug addict. So I adopted her when I was 21. Wasn't ready to become a parent, but I had to do it. Two years later, we had, me and my wife were married, had our own kid, and my camera broke. So I went to Best Buy, and instead of buying another point and shoot, the guy's like, bro, you gotta get this camera, interchangeable lens, it's sick, it's way more expensive, but you'll love it. I'm a nerd, I like gear, so I bought it. I went home, I started taking pictures with it, and guess what? My pictures were crap, horrible. Um, so I started Googling and YouTubing on how to learn a little bit better. I went to Flickr.com, um, which is an amazing photo sharing site, 
And the cool thing with that site that I found most useful was that I could put my camera type in and see all the pictures that everybody in the world was taking with that camera, right? You can do it with the iPhone, you can do it with whatever. The pictures that were coming out though were amazing. Like I did not understand how people were getting this and I was getting crap by pushing this button. So the next thing I did was I contacted five photographers. Now I'm gonna ask you guys a question. You guys are all interested in something, right? You don't have to say what it is, but you're interested in something. If you aren't doing well at what you're interested in and you go to ask somebody for help, What's the answer you expect them to give you, honestly? Yes. yes. To help, right? You expect them to say no? You ask her for help right now? You think she'd say no? Sometimes. Most percent. Sometimes no? Depends depending on my mood. Yeah. Well, let's have a little more faith in people because I expected the five photographers that I contacted, I expected at least one of them to say yes. I expected all of them to say yes, to say, hey, yeah, you're coming into my community. I'm going to help you do the best that you can possibly do. Well, these five photographers, I wrote them all emails, all the same email, explaining who I was, what I was doing, what I needed. Three of them told me to drop dead. <laughs> One of them told me I was gonna kill the community because I wasn't educated in photography and I would never make, become a photographer ever. And one told me, which is the best answer I got, $600 for an hour of training. Which, now you think about it, it's kind of, it's okay because they're trying to make some money off of it, off of their education but I couldn't afford $600 an hour. I couldn't afford $200 an hour. So my career, dead before it started, right? So imagine that, imagine you guys asking somebody sincerely for help, whether you guys are joking about it or not, and they said no to you. How do you come back at that? How do you come back with somebody telling you you're gonna kill the community that you're coming into, whether you're a clothing designer, photographer, videographer, or anything? I took a couple months off and I just forgot about it because I was still, I still had my career doing massage therapy. But then I came back, Google, YouTube, taught myself, created a business page on Facebook when Facebook actually worked the way it's supposed to work. And um, a few years later, um, quit massage therapy one day, literally just walked out, sent all my clients to another therapist and said, I'm quitting. Um, freaked myself out. And then a couple years later, I've, I'm now best photographer of Reno for five years in a row. I have just stuff, like stuff, awards. And the cool thing is, is these, well, cool for me, not for them. These photographers are still shooting in the area, and three of them are members at my studio, but they do not remember it was me that they told to drop dead, because it came from a different email. It didn't come from my email with something crazy, like got not to charge on it. I still haven't told these photographers this story. One day I will, I might not. If they follow my YouTube channel, then they'll see it if they remember telling me to drop dead. So my answer now to everybody that asks me for help with anything, whether I know it or not, hopefully it's photography, hopefully I know it, what's my answer? Yes. Perfect. It's super important to me that I teach what I know because if I teach what I know, I retain more of the information. Also, I never want to be that person to kill somebody's dreams. So. I feel at this age, you guys are all still growing in your personalities. Everybody's still kind of figuring out who they are. I want you to remember that everything you say to somebody means something. Simple enough? Cool. So, um, what was the last question I'm trying to answer? The last one, what did you say? It's something that you guys have to do. Oh, cool. So I never answered this. So what I find, this is something you guys are gonna answer, so you guys do it, make it epic, make it amazing, probably the best that you've done all day. I find <laughs> photography, you can tie two things together. You love cats. You love cars. You love food. You love girls. You love boys. Yes. <laughs> I found that with photography, it gives me an in onto the other thing that I like. Say I'm all about Ferrari, but I can't buy a Ferrari. But if I was an amazing enough photographer, do you think I could probably shoot a couple Ferraris? Yeah. How would you say no? I couldn't, yeah. I don't like cars. Um, but I do like girls. I'm married to a girl. I got three little girls at home. I got a girl puppy. Okay. So how I started my career is I'm a model photographer. I still do it to this day. Um, magazines, local, national, blah. But I get to meet amazing girls, because I like girls. Because in middle school and high school, 
girls shouldn't talk to me. Now they have to. <laughs> I, says, um, I do love food as well, so I shoot a lot of food. And um, if you guys ever see anything like at Porta Sub when you go into there, I shot all that. Oh, really? Yeah, really. Why is that like the best thing though? Like, I'll tell people like I shoot for her now, and I shoot for like all this, and like Porta Subs? <laughs> sandwich place? Um, how much time? Eight minutes? Perfect. Cool. Questions? Real question. Is this a real question? Okay. I do know Rachel Rose. She's a member of my. Is Rachel here? Yeah, yeah. I just, I just had her. She's epic. Do you guys like? Do you have any competition? All right. Here's the biggest thing about me that you guys need to know right now. I have a hashtag on everything: competition over community. Reverse that. <laughs> community over competition. There is no competition in my world. Uh, Rachel assisted me on three weddings. Assisted me on four shoots. Um, oh, it's from the chair. Um, assisted me on four shoots. She's a member of my studio. I've helped her build and grow her career into a point where she is as busy as I am. If we think that, if any of you guys think that somebody coming into your business, into your world, is gonna take away clients from you, huge misconception. Why wouldn't I train somebody to do amazing work at photography, build to the level that I build, so that they can charge what I charge? For instance, I charge $3,500 for a wedding. There's a lot of newer photographers who don't know anything about photography that come in and charge $500. If you're looking for a wedding photographer and you see $500, doesn't that sound better to you? When you're like, oh, $500 and you're $3,500? Dude, I'm gonna hire the $500. Well, I have a lot more skills for the $3,500. It's the most important part of your day. You're never gonna get this day back again. I'll take pictures of your whole family. Your grandma might be gone after this. So I get to charge what I charge, and I have all the skills and the technology and everything to do it, but this person charges 500 bucks. So instead of me arguing with this $500 photographer saying, you only charge $500, you're killing my business, your competition, get out of my face. What if I taught that person to charge 3,500? All of a sudden, wouldn't our rates, wouldn't you guys now go, all right, well, it's about 3,500 each. Uh, to put it in your guys' perspective, if you went and got and said, bought like a new video game system, what are girls into now? Makeup? Xbox. No. Xbox. No. All right, so if you guys were to buy an Xbox, you can't buy, and a PlayStation, so Xbox and PlayStation. You cannot, they're the same price. They're basically the same price, right? That's what we have to do. So it's, it's comp community, why am I messing up? Community over competition. So she's not my competition, she's actually a really good friend of mine. Um, and we built her up, um, and she's freaking epic at her work. I don't know if you checked out her work, but she's freaking, she's so freaking good. Um, cool. Any more questions before I go to my last thing? What's your YouTube channel? Jeremy Lee. All right. All right, I'm gonna go subscribe. Yeah. I'm gonna subscribe right now. Comment too on it, please, and give me some likes. Okay, I'll make sure of that. Okay, I have time for one more question before I get my thing. Five minutes. What? 33 on Monday, which means I'm- Happy birthday. 32. 32. Are you a Thanks, I wear a medium shirt and then 34 pants if you guys want to buy me. All right, I'll give you the second. I do. Everything I have is Jeremy Lou. Instagram, Facebook, Jeremy Lou Photography, Jeremy Lou Facebook. I don't have Snapchat because I'm an adult. Like, who has Snapchat? I might teach you how to do it. I'm going to teach you how to do it. All right, bring it in. Last thing I'm going to tell you guys before I let you go, and I'm going to get to go eat lunch. As the gift of saying no. I learned this. Um, I feel these girls would rock the no. I, I learned this a little later in life because, remember, I'm an introvert. I didn't have many friends. So one of the ways that I made a lot of friends was trying to say yes and maybe to everybody to make them um, like me a little bit better. You know, nobody ever really wants to hear no. So um, the art... The gift of saying no, when somebody asks you a question and you don't want to do it or you can't do it or you just whatever, hate it, say no. Don't say maybe. Say yes or no. So imagine this. I um, These two right here. Let's imagine one is going to a party or throwing a party. And the other one go, and she goes, hey, can you come to my party on Friday? 
And she really, maybe she doesn't want to go. But she's like, I really need you to be there. So instead of her saying no, she, don't, she goes, maybe? Yeah. I'll think about it. I might be there. I'm not sure. I might have to do something else. Well, now at the party, she's going to be looking for her friend the whole night. And then she's going to get disappointed, and they're going to hate each other. They're going to be mad, right? But they can be disappointed at a no. I'd rather somebody say no to me. Hey, can you come over to my dinner party? It'll be me and my wife and a few other people, and we'll have dinner for you ready. Oh, well, maybe I'll be there. I'll be there. And so if you say yes, I expect you there. But if you say maybe, I have no idea. Am I setting the plate for you or am I not? So it's a gift of no. And it seems small right now to you guys, but every time somebody asks you something, if you say maybe, I want you guys to think again and then give them a direct answer. Because it'll make life so much better for them. And then the other key advice is people love hearing their own name. So anytime you talk to somebody, learn their name, say their name. What's my name? Jeremy. Jeremy. Say what? No, you didn't. It's so blue. You feel like I can't hear you. Like, I feel like you're right there. You sound like an eagle. <gasps> okay. Um, that's it. Any last questions? Anybody? Anybody curious about photography? I like medium walks on the beach. Does anybody here interested in photography? Do you have any photographers? Remember, I wasn't a photographer until later in life, so if you are, the best camera to shoot with is a, is a camera that you have. It's not your gear that makes you a photographer. What? Our, our couch is not really good. No, I like the long one. I'd rather just like crawl there on my stomach. I need the donut. <laughs> 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 <laughs>